In this short video, we'll be talking about proto-oncogenes. This is a high yield video for USMLE step one, so stay tuned till the end. So proto-oncogenes are important genes that regulate growth and proliferation in a cell. So obviously the proto-oncogene product or the protein product regulates cell division, promote growth and survival. Similarly, the tumor suppressor gene and its products suppress the growth and division. So a uh, interplay between the proto-oncogene and tumor suppressor gene decides whether there could be cancerous development in the body or not. In this video, we are going to talk about and understand this process in details with examples and biological principles. So video is broken down into three parts. First, we would learn what are proto-oncogenes, which we already learned. Then the question is, what does these proto-oncogenes code for? And which biological pathways are really affected by these gene products. And lastly, we are going to focus on how proto-oncogenes are associated with cancer. That means what aspects goes wrong in the cancer that lead to cancer development. So stay tuned. So it turns out proto-oncogenes are super important for the body. So as the tumor suppressor genes, but any gain of function mutation in proto-oncogene or loss of function mutation in tumor suppressor gene would lead to uncontrolled and unproliferative growth that that basic that basically means uh, cancer development right uh, uncontrolled cell division or growth would eventually lead to formation of a cancer so uncontrolled division lead to tumor formation or new growth which is known as neoplasia eventually that can advance into the stage of carcinoma or even metastasize to other body parts so one thing is very clear that proto-oncogenes regulate aspects of cell cycle and cell division. If we can understand what aspects of these cell cycle is regulated by the proto-oncogene, we would get a better understanding of the overall biology behind it. So let's try to appreciate these uh, biological aspects. So if we look at uh, overall big picture that there are many biological signaling pathway which regulate growth and proliferation. One such is MAP kinase pathway. But even if we don't go to specifics, we know there are several components in the pathway. For example, there could be receptors, intracellular mediators or transcription factors which all help to uh, get the biological response of the pathway. Now, proto-oncogene can code for any component of these pathways. For example, a proto-oncogene can code for a receptor. Or, for example, a proto-oncogene can code for a intracellular signaling pathway mediator, maybe a kinase enzyme. Or it can also code for a, a transcriptional regulator of a pathway. Now, generally, that's why proto-oncogene is super important. Because if these products are not produced in normal fashion, then growth and proliferation would be hampered. But at the same time, if there is a mutation in these proto-oncogene which lead to all these component, overproduction of this component or some problem in the component, that is detrimental. So let's talk about some name of the proto-oncogene, some examples, keeping in USMLE in mind. So first we'll talk about KRAS. So this is basically a RAS GTPase molecule. In a moment it would be clear why it is a proto-oncogene and how it uh, lead to the tumor formation. So associated neoplastic conditions involve colorectal, lung and pancreatic cancer. Now there are a bunch of receptors which are EGFR, HER2 and ALK. All of them are receptor tyrosine kinase. So basically these are all cell surface receptors. Mutation in these are associated with either lung adenocarcinoma or breast or gastric carcinomas. Then there is BCR-ABL which is a non-receptor tyrosine kinase and it is involved in basically CML and AL. There is BRAF, which is a serine threonine kinase. It's an kinase enzyme associated with bunch of cancers like melanoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, colorectal carcinoma, papillary thyroid carcinoma, hairy cell leukemia, etc. Then there is CMIC and NMIC. Both of them are transcription factor. They are associated with Burkitt lymphoma or neuroblastoma. So these are transcription factors. So literally we can understand through these examples, some of the examples fall into the signaling receptor. Some of them are intracellular kinases. Some of them are transcription factor. So given that so much of diversity, what is the commonality between all of these? So what aspect goes wrong? And the aspect that goes wrong is the cell cycle tuning or the growth or proliferation tuning. Let's try to appreciate that. 
So first we'll talk about the K-RAS mutations. K-RAS is basically a RAS oncogene which give rise to a RAS GTPase. It is toggling between a GTP bound active form with a GDP bound inactive form. So it can switch between on and off states. And uh, many of these RAS mutations lead to a constitutive activation of the RAS GTPase. That means it's always on, it never switches off. Anyway, this is associated with neoplasmic conditions like colorectal, lung and pancreatic cancer. Let's talk about the signaling in normal scenario such that we can understand the abnormal scenario better. So basically there is GRB2. Um, basically there are like receptor tyrosine kinase on the cell surface when mitogen or growth factor binds to this cell surface receptor. Adapter molecules like GRB2, SOS binds to it. Eventually, RAS gets activated to its GTP bound form, which activates a bunch of kinases like RAF, MEK, ARC, etc. ARC eventually move to the nucleus, lead to the production of genes which regulates growth, survival and proliferation. This is how RAS MAP kinase pathway is well known pathway for normal development and growth. Now, in normal scenario only, after a point of time, there are GTPase activator protein which inactivate the RAS. So the GTP is hydrolyzed back to GDP and all the downstream pathway shuts off. That means switching on and off or tuning of any signaling pathway is super important. So this kind of switching off ensures that this growth and proliferation doesn't happen for an indefinite time. It is regulated, right? And this regulation of the cell cycle uh, perspective is really important, which goes wrong in cancer. So in case of constitutive RAF, RAS, what happens is the RAS oncogene is always active. Even, even if there is no signal, the GTP cannot be hydrolyzed. That means all the, the, G, G, the ga gap or the GTP as activator protein is unable to hydrolyze the GTP. So it's always active and the downstream pathway is always active. Regardless whether there is the uh, upstream mitogen present or not, growth factor present or not, doesn't matter. The pathway is always active. So it's kind of like a dysregulated pathway leading to overgrowth, overproliferation and ultimately leading to cancer. Same things are true for BRAF, which is basically a serinthrionine kinase. So its job is to phosphorylate downstream uh, effectors. Now it is associated with melanoma, non-Hodgkin's non lymphoma, colorectal carcinoma and bunch of other cancers. Let's see how it happens. So just like the RAS mutations, the BRAF oncogene lead to a constitutive activation of these BRAF kinase. That means whether the upstream, so imagine a scenario that the growth factors are not there. So in absence of the growth factor, we don't expect any growth or growth or proliferation gene to be ac active. But since the RAF is mutated, all the downstream pathway is active, even if the growth factor is not there. That leads to uncontrolled growth, proliferation and ultimately leading to cancer. And this is true at a receptor level. There are many receptors like ERBB1, ERBB2, uh, which are EGFRs actually. So basically these tyrosine kinase receptors uh, binds to ligand, gets phosphorylated and then starts the growth and signaling pathway. So this is how the signaling pathway turns on. But if the mitogen is not present, means the, the growth factors are not pre present, so obviously the pathway should be shut off. There should be no readout from that pathway. But in many mutations, which are oncogenic mutation or proto-oncogenes turns into oncogene, in that case, the receptors remain phosphorylated regardless whether the mitogens are present or not. Ligand, ligands present is not any more important. It is always by default in an active state. So that lead to overall uncontrolled growth and signaling pathway leading to cancer development. Now, now we are talking about mutations that are leading to most of the most of the cases loss or gain of new function. Sometimes what happens is like you can have more and more product. For example, simic gene is upregulated. Simic gene normally controls growth, survival and proliferation by regulating the gene expression at a transcriptional level. So the semic mutation often lead to our overproduction of semic. It's not a mutated semic, it's just more in numbers. And this overproduced semic lead to different tuning of the gene expression. Now growth, survival and proliferation genes are expressed in higher amount. That is detrimental, that's the problem. That is leading to the cancer formation. 
similar expression similar uh, uh, examples can be found from the bcr abl situation which is associated with cml so it's a instance of translocation where one part of the chromosome breaks on and uh, go, goes and attach to another part of the chromosome and that happens between the chromosome number 9 and 22 generally chromosome number 9 code for uh, abl kinase abl kinase containing region gets translocated into the chromosome 22 near the bcr containing region now bcr is basically a very highly active zone which lead to too much abl kinase production it's not a mutated abl kinase it's basically overproduction of the abl kinase and too much of abl kinase lead to abnormal growth and proliferation of the leukocytes that lead to CML. Anyway, another example could be found that mRNA stability can be altered by uh, uh, proto-oncogenic mutations. For example, we know that CFOS and June are associated with uh, MAP kinase signaling pathway which regulates growth and proliferation. So many CFOS mutations lead to stabilization of the mRNA. So the mRNA is not degraded. So the Overall, there is an accumulation of CFOS. CFOS is just staying more time in the nucleus. So in presence of CFOS, there would be, again, activation of the growth survival genes, which ultimately lead to overgrowth turning into cancer. Now we understand how the gain-of-function mutations in proto-oncogene actually led to cancer formation. We can appreciate the biology and how several aspects of the cell signaling and division goes wrong when there is a mutation in these proto-oncogene. We looked at RAS, EGFR, or ERBB1, ERBB2, ALK. We looked at BCR, ABL, BRAF, CMYK, etc. So last but not the least, BCL2 is a regulator of apoptotic pathway. Basically, BCL2 is an anti-apoptotic factor it prevents apoptosis so when you prevent the apoptosis you basically promote the survival right so overall too much cell survival drive can also lead to cancer this is a different flavor but now we understand the diverse biology which are associated with proto-oncogenes so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe see you in next video